So the first thing that we need to do is there are two screws on each side right here and right here. We definitely need to remove those. So we're gonna start by taking this one off and try not to do what I just did and almost lose it. And then this one. That should loosen this outside case from the sides. This is also connected and sandwiched in between those two screw holes on both sides. If you take these four screws off with these two, you'll wind up taking the top off. Not a lot to see there, just a lot of electronics. You probably don't want to be messing around with that side. The bottom side is what we need to get to. The last time that I did this, I don't remember it being too terribly difficult, but I haven't done it since my first FT891 got the, uh, the Molex Delete last year. And we're talking 2022 last year. Okay. Now there are one, two, three, four of these screws on the bottom. I'm assuming these need to come out. I don't know about the ones holding the feet on yet. We'll find out in a minute. So we're gonna take that screw. They're all the same, so don't worry about mixing them up. Now we're gonna go over here. There's two more that are connected to the body, the aluminum body underneath. This is steel the body because it's part of the heat sink too in there I believe it's all aluminum did not remove any screws here or here but let's see if this is going to lift up yep so that's all you need to do let's lift up carefully make sure there's no wires attached okay so there we have the lid and we have the screws underneath it I'm gonna slide those over Take a look, you got positive on the left, negative on the right. And we made a piece that's gonna fit right here. The only thing to get this out is you take these two screws off and then this pinches from the side. If I recall correctly, that was aggravating. You wanna save these two screws because the part that we made to replace it, you can see already, I've got a little bit too long of wires, but better too long than too short. You're gonna put these right there. Now these can be bought from your automotive store right offhand. I don't remember what they are, what size they are, but they are teeny tiny. And I do have the box. Pause, unpause. Here they are. These are a 10 pack of amp ring terminals. They are 16 to 14. And that's all the information this really has, but I got these from Tyco and these are it. They can carry between 18 and 30 amps. Perfect. Okay, so you can kind of see nothing because I can't focus, but there they are. The part number is a CPGI-2-183815-0-10. But these are perfect for this. What you do is you crimp them on to, the, to each wire, put those where they need to go. Then you make you some Anderson power poles and I'll show you how I make Anderson power poles. These are, I think the 15 amp, but I have some bigger ones over here. These I bought from Ham Radio Outlet. These are the 45 amp. These are the middle ones. I, I can't remember what they are, but they uh, just barely crimp with this. I figured I'd get these big ones because these big ones, you can do some really large wire with that. Alrighty, they're also stupid expensive when you buy them like that, but they work and that's what's cool. Back to what we were doing. We need to remove these two screws. We're gonna set those right there. These are different. You cannot put them anywhere else and still have the functionality of this radio. Now you can see that this starts to wiggle around 
And this is where I think you have to pinch this guy down right here. I am going to try to do that with this. Get one side in, get the other side in. Okay, you saw that wasn't too terribly bad. We're gonna lift that out. Now hang on to that if you wanna resell it. Of course, most amateur radio operators, hams, probably wouldn't mind if this wasn't in there. Okay, I had to, I, I just, I had to pause it for just a minute. This piece is in there extremely tight. So, that's what that looks like. Now, the next thing that you have to do is on the back side, this piece goes over it like this, and that's where your screws come in. So, what you could do, and this is what I am going to do, is I'm going to pull that out and probably regret every second of it, but I'm going to go ahead and put it together while I can finagle these wires, and then I'll push it back in. So we can have a much simpler time. can see that's so much easier to do it that way you orient that so that it goes in the right direction it wants to put up a fight there's no need to put up a fight I'm just trying to keep the whole thing together Looks like I'm failing miserably in that. Okay, I think that's in there. Yep. Now we're gonna try to push this back in. So you get to see me struggle one more time. We're gonna push these out of the way. What I did was I took one of these and kind of wedged it in there and then I smushed the other side in it's so much easier when you just go ahead and pause the video and not try to attempt this on camera I think it might have been that back side that I put in there first then I smushed that side in okay so you can see it can be done all right let's take a look looks like it fits perfectly we got our screw holes in there we have our anderson power poles almost seated the first time you plug it in it may be a little tricky then this piece Keeps your Anderson power poles from sliding out. Angle that piece in. Now, once we turn this or twist the screw, you can watch that piece cinch up into the rig. Or into the, not the rig. What is this called? Anderson power pole connector seat mount no, right, right here it really isn't I can't get that through the start which I'm probably not lined up right with the screw hole we'll find it to that time to find out yep so after that part flat maybe it'll be splashing in the way of the screw hole so then you tighten this up you see a cinch up against the body you want to be careful whatever the lamination from this way on the reprint is not the strongest way to print screw holes because you can't tighten and separate those laminations you just pull it apart hard you can glue one part of this back together you got a piece off of this my PLA is a little old, so it's very real. This is not a design that you want to keep in your vehicle because PLA has a very low blast age where it turns to just mush. You don't want it to turn mush. Okay, I think that's in there. I don't want to turn it too tight. There's no need to turn it too tight. You don't, you don't need to manhandle it. Okay. That's it. 
Now, you can see that I made these wires at least a half an inch too long. I think it's gonna be okay, because we can take and bend the wires. And the same thing happened in my other rig. You can bend the wires to get them in there. There's plenty of room right here for wires. So if you make them a little long beforehand, that's okay. Just keep in mind, it's gonna take some elbow grease to get that to line up. So you push them where you want them. Wee, 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 wee. And all I'm doing is tightening this screw down. And that's negative. And it has the colors here. If you forget, it says red and black inside of the radio. So if I pick this up and show you, you're not gonna be able to see it on video unless you got an 80 inch or 90 inch TV. But red is this one and underneath there black is this one. So make sure you put the right ones in the right place. If you don't, might be the last time that you get to do that. What I'm unhappy about right here is the fact that this black wire I wanted to, it is slightly in the way of where this red one is. So I'm gonna push that away, do that as I can. And then we'll find a place where the red one go. Boom. We'll see if we can get our chance to play right back here. If you make it a little bit short, put a little bit here. If you find some pretty big kits, I don't know why you want to, it's kind of fun to 3D print and make it yourself. That's, that's how fun to be an imagery operator is doing things on your own. So we have this, we're not sure they're not touching any other parts. I'm sure that is down pretty good because we don't want those kind of So there it is. That is the delete of the Molex. So we got rid of that for now. Then we can take and put our cover back on. We'll find out if it works in a minute. We're gonna now use the other end of the Molex cable or the connector that's connected to the power cable that ships with the radio. I use a 100 amp hour Red Odeo battery. Now my friend WD4DAN has the one with the folded cells and it's about half the size of this big one, but I didn't want to lose my big one. I got a pretty good deal on it, not complaining at all. We're gonna put those four screws back to hold the bottom of the chassis, the cover, to the aluminum block that's on the inside. Then you have four screws that go on the sides. And they go one right there in the smaller hole, two in the smaller hole. Start that, cinch that down. Took a little bit of editing to make this video because I did have some mistakes in there. One was taking the wrong side of the radio off. You don't want to take the small piece, you want the large piece to come off. I edited that out. The other thing is somebody was in the kitchen at one point in time making as much noise as possible just to make a water. Eh, it happens when you do projects in the kitchen. So we have these four screws back in. That is all. We are done. So some M3 screws. I had an M3-.50 and I believe it was a 12 millimeter length. You could probably go a little longer, a little shorter. We had a, you only need two of these bad boys, a 16 to 14 gauge. Uh, it says four to six stud, and I can't read the writing on that. These guys are great. That's what you need. And then two short pieces of wire, and then you needed your power pole connectors. So we're gonna make one more power pole. These are already put together, which is really nice. You don't have to 
figure out what orientation to put these in. These are bonded together, so they will not come apart, which is also a really nice feature of this particular kit. And on one side of the power, the power wires that came from Yesu with fuses, I had already installed one power pole connector. That might be the one that you connect to the radio back here. Boom, go there. Now the other end, you're gonna follow the end of these wires until you get to your factory connector the other end of the Molex. And we're gonna cut that off on hand. That's one way to do it. If you really want to, you can keep these two pieces together. So that's the factory install that goes in the radio. This is the part that connects to the outside. Don't know why anybody would wanna go back, but you know, there, there we go. You also, you're not going to see me doing this, but you want to keep these wires separated. I need to find some way to glue these wires together so that they're not just hanging out or braid them or something. So what we're going to use is a wire stripper and we are going to strip the ends of the wires off. This is not the right size for this, but the working inch might do that for a like this, and then maybe we'll cut any wires on the inside. And should be able to just go, there's one. See, I just all the wires fall off. And the same thing, I'm not sweat two of the wires fall off out of the 20 strands that are probably in there. And do the same thing, we're going to circle around to break the insulation. Can you break it down like that? Just rotate that around this really dull knife. There we go. Now, where'd they go? Where'd they go? There's one of them. There's two of them. We're going to orient these this way. So we're going to put the wire in there like this. I always leave an insulation gap right there. I think that I need to cut that just a little bit. That's a little too long. This is where having a pair of wire cutters would really come in handy. But for some reason, I don't know where they are. We started cleaning up in the house and so I don't know what I did with them. I have no idea what box they went in. We got home from vacation and because we got home on vacation, my wife was like, we're going to rearrange. Okay. That's about the right size right there. So it should fit about like that. Then these are, Chompy lost his eyeball, but these are the DX Engineering crimps. You take and you place that. I usually place it in there like that. Try to cinch it up so that it pushes up in there like that. You can watch this thing go crimpity crimp 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 there you go there's the red that's so easy it should just snap right in let's find out if you do it right it should just click just like that okay let's do the black side let's make sure that we Try to keep it as untangled as possible. Just about jump rope with this thing. Okay, doing the same thing. I'm gonna cut off the excess right here because I made it a little bit too long. If you have it too long, then you may get the wires in the way on the inside. And if you do that, we're almost there. If you do that, then it may not push all the way in. Then you're going to be in a world of hurt. Okay, well, there's some guts right there. Don't tell my wife. Same thing. 
We're going to take this. We're going to put it inside of the 45 because these are 45 amp. Normally I use 30 amp. If you get it started like this, then you can take this, put it right there, put it to the end, and then go chompy, 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 snip. And it's amazing how fast that is. It's effortless. No soldering, no guesses. And then you go find the other end. And the same thing, you just take and boom, there we go. So now let's test and make sure that we don't let the smoke out. This is, this is where bad things can happen. I think the fuse is connected to this one. So just in case. Now we're done. We did it. We did it. You can totally unplug it super easy, just like that. And that's exactly what you'll do with the piece that's in here. You use your chompy chomp. And then I have another one, another one of these that I got from the automotive store that you can do your, your crimps like those on these guys. There's another tool for this that's similar to this one, but it just smushes those down so nicely. It makes this job so much easier. It's nice to have these tools around, especially if you use them a lot. So, alrighty. Eventually, Chompy will calm down. We did it. So now we have anybody can make their connection just by plugging in right there and then having it connected to their battery. So this is W1RCP and we did it. So there is the red audio. There's the re re radio. And here's the mess that I have to clean up. So there's, there's a bunch of tools that I had out. Alrighty, so I'm gonna clean this up. The radio is ready to go back in the go box for another adventure.